My name is Derek and I do YouTube videos about audio equipment. Videos about audio. I know it doesn't make sense, but if you guys enjoy that type of stuff, you might enjoy subscribing to my channel and I'd appreciate it. So stick around for the cool content and don't be surprised if you see a big dummy. What's up guys, Big D Wiz, OldSchoolStereo.com. Today we're gonna look at Visonic Amplifier. This thing just looks cool, check it out. With the handles and the VU meters and the little plexiglass little cover there for the crossover and everything. Just a really slick looking amp. A lot of people know these as flea market amps, but hey, I love it. Big shout out to my boy Brad over at Legends of Car Audio for sending this over to me. Thanks a lot, Brad. Check him out, legendofcaraudio.com. This Visonic amplifier is listed in the 2002 Car Audio Electronics directory. You can see it right here listed at the top, 2000 by two. I don't know where they come up with those numbers, but check it out. It's a two channel amp and $1,403 MSRP. Uh, yeah, for some reason I don't think that's right. So I did a little research and found out, you know, here's a website that carried it before, $699.95, which was still really expensive. And there are the ratings you can see, 250 by two at four ohms, 450 by two at two ohms, 750 by two at one ohm, 2000 by one at two ohms mono. I found it also on overstock.com as a refurb for 234.95, even though they were out of stock. Here we'll check the dimensions. It's 14 inches or 355 millimeters long by 8.5 inches or 216 millimeters wide. And then the thickness is kind of your average thickness around two and a half inches or 63.5 millimeters. Now let's check each end of the amp. On one end you can see a speaker load select for two ohm, four ohm, or one ohm. Input range adjustment, remote level control, and also RCA input. Unfortunately I did not have the remote level control with this amplifier so I won't be able to test that out. On the other end we have three 30 amp fuses. We have 12 volt turn on and ground and all the speaker terminals are by screw down terminals. Notice the screw down terminals are upside down so you kind of have to flip the amp over to get it connected up. Most of the controls for the amp are underneath this plexiglass panel in the front here. You can see the crossover slope, also the crossover adjustment level, gain level, full range or low pass, stereo bridged, mono, also a bass boost and then there's a light that shows you one ohm or just regular operation. So let's get the amp all wired up here so we can fire it up for the dyno. You see we're using four gauge OFC wiring there with the spade connectors. And for the speaker terminals, we're using eight gauge. And the very first test we're gonna do, you'll see we have all the speaker wires connected so we will do both channels loaded. Stick around for after the test to see the amp guts. Make sure you check out 12V Talk with me and Hi5 Vega. It's a podcast we do. You can do youtube.com slash 12 e talk. Check us out. Let's fire up the dino. All right, as I mentioned, the first test we're going to do, we're going to be two channel tests. So we'll have both of the channels loaded and we'll check them individually. We'll fire the amp up here. You can see just the single green light on the right side there coming up. That tells us the amp's powered up. So first off, we will try four ohms to 1% THD to 40 Hertz. This is the certified test. Amplifier is rated 250 by two. And yes, you can see we got that. 283, 278. So the channels are actually pretty close and 75% efficiency. Pretty good from an amp from 2002. Next up, let's try two ohms. Again, this is stereo test. Both channels are loaded. It's rated 450 by two, and you can see we got that, 472, 474. Nice job. Efficiency a little bit lower with this test, 60.7%. So now let's move on to the mono test. And we're gonna bridge the amp, we're gonna show you how to do that. It is the left positive and the right negative on the amplifier. And since we're gonna test the amp at two ohms mono, we're gonna set it to the one ohm switch on the amp. You can see the little amber light there beside the green light. Yep, that shows us that we're in the one ohm mode. So let's run it at two ohms mono, which a two channel amp bridged at two ohms is one ohm per channel. 
We're gonna do the test at 40 hertz. It's rated 2000 watts, but I don't know where they got that from. But let's try it anyway and see what we get. 964 watts at 14.31, so nowhere near that 2000 watts. Again, I don't know where they came up with that number. And we got right at 60% efficiency. All right, next up, we'll try the dynamic test at two ohms mono. Again, that 2000 watt number we know is not valid, but let's just see what we can get at two ohms mono. You can see 1036 watts. I don't think we're gonna get any more at 14.23 volts. So now let's check out what is inside this amp. Let's take out the trusty old screwdriver we got from Amazon. Check the link in the video description. Get you one of these if you don't have one because they're very useful. That's right, everybody needs one of these. All right, so as expected, the VU meters are hooked up via wires to the amp, and so it was difficult to get that top panel enough out of the way, but you can see the internals here. Here are the guts. Not a bad looking amp from 2002, and yes, there is a big tripath chip, and also we got the version here on the amp, 2000 watt class T, Rev 1.0 with the V2000T. We have 3300 microfarad, 25 volt caps here, and then 50 volt, 1000 microfarad, 105 degrees Celsius, which we like. Here's a tripath chip on the amp, which actually drives the output. So very cool amp, but I heard, heard these chips are hard to come by if they actually go bad. So let's try it out now with a little bit of bass music and we'll watch those VU meters. Let's see what it does. Neighbors are gonna hate me. <laughs> Jamming out this morning here with the Vasonic V2000T and the VU meters and all their goodness. Damn shit, bro. All right, now we'll take a look at the results. I did not show all the tests I did, but I've actually got them here listed on the dyno sheet. So you can gaze, you can pause if you want to see all the results here. Some additional tests I didn't show, including the four ohm mono test where it's rated 900 watts, it did 928. It actually did really good until we got under the two ohm rating mono and didn't quite meet its rating, which 2000 watts, not sure where they came up with that. Again, big shout out to Brad over at Legends of Car Audio for sending this amp to me and all my supporters at patreon.com slash old school stereo. Thanks for watching, until next time, BD Wiz, I'm out of here. All right, mini Brazilian monster here, the Stetson IR 400.4, rated 200 by two and at 138. We're gonna try one kilohertz track. We've got the channels bridged and we're gonna go uncertified this time up to clipping. Let's see what we can get.